What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. Everybody and welcome back to the NECC Rocket League week number six. My name is Bass from the past and alongside me is a new face to our casting team that I am so very, very happy to welcome on board. Gigabyte, welcome to the booth, my friend. How are you doing on this fine afternoon? Well, I am doing amazing, Bass. New to NECC, but definitely not new to this amazing Rocket League community or the Collegiate community either. If you haven't seen me before, I cast on Collegiate, uh, the Collegiate Carball Association as well as a whole bunch of other community organizations and a couple of RLCS streams in the grid here and there. But that is not why we are here. We are here to see a very fantastic upcoming matchup between our first two teams of the day on the East Challengers division. Bass, you want to tell us more about that? Indeed, we've got Howard Community College versus Champlain College Esports. These two teams have been battling it out for quite some time here. And, well, they haven't necessarily had the most dominant start simply, but they've had some pretty good ones. Both of these teams are at 4-1 and one right now, meaning that, well, they're not necessarily, you know, perfect throughout the season, but they're pretty close to that. At 4-1, and one, they have been dominant so far. Both of them are six games up inferential-wise, and they have been doing really well as of recent to make it to this place. Matter of fact, both of these teams coming off of a win last week 
For, unfortunately for Champlain, they've only got one win. Meanwhile, Howard has two in a row. But both of these teams have got some momentum on their side. And it is going to make an incredible matchup here. And honestly, we're just kind of waiting for these teams to hop on in. The quicker we can get to this action, the better that we can have all of this start on up. Gigabyte, though, looking towards this first match, I know that you're not necessarily, you know, as familiar with these teams, but just coming from a collegiate aspect, what do you think is most important for these teams coming out of the gate? Well, coming out of the gate, it's all going to be about knowing your opponent. We have we have tons of footage for each of these teams. It's all going to be about who has done more research on the opponent and has game planned around that successfully. So if I had to guess here, I've seen Champlain play before. I have never seen Howard Community College before, so this is going to be an interesting new experience for me. But from what I've seen Champlain, uh, Champlain play before, uh, they they like to kind of feel out their opponent. They have a they have a longer feeling out time than most other teams out there. So we might see them kind of fall off in the early going, maybe in the first uh, half of a game or maybe even the first game. We don't see them do too well, but then I see I think we see them pop off in game two and throughout the rest of the series as well. As for the Howard Community College side of things, it's all going to be about knowing your opponent and knowing what their weaknesses are, then adjusting your game plan around that actively if necessary to make to kind of capitalize on those weaknesses yeah, absolutely. And I think both of these teams are well uh, well on their way to being able to adjust like that. As you said, you know, game number two is where we're going to see the pickup speed. It's more, it's most likely that we're going to see these guys go to game number five. Both teams coming off of a game five victory last week. So, you know, they're going to battle it out for the entirety of this series. And well, we'll have to find out exactly how much battling we get. Game number one underway. Kickoff has started. Good luck to both of the teams. We've got Howard Community College in the blue, CCE in the orange. Let's see what they've got. Already off to the races are Howard Community College. We said that Sam Plain might see a little bit of a slowdown in the early going, and it does look like they are kind of taking their time here. Although Howard Community College getting a good couple good shots. Shots everywhere. Paul gets one down. One shot in. Finally, Logs and Trees is able to put that one in and send Howard Community up by a goal. And this was just a very fast and furious offense from the start. You mentioned it was going to take some time for these teams to try and get adjusted to each other, you know, feel out how they wanted to play. And, well, not a lot of time given there, unfortunately. CCE find themselves the victims of a very early deficit here. Now they've got to try and regain. Billy Gates wants to do exactly that. Good setup for Humphreys. The shot not going to be there, though. Pulse will deny that one early. And as soon as CCE gets some offensive momentum, it is thrown back into their half. Good to see a little bit of life out of them, but they've got to be careful. They can't just abandon the defense as it still does look like a scramble on the back half. Oh, finally now we see Champlain getting some offense going, but just as I say that, they get demoed and get pushed out. Howard is definitely taking a very aggressive stance here. They're kind of capitalizing on Champlain, kind of waiting to feel them out. However, if they get too aggressive about it, too happy about pushing up on offense, it could be capitalized on just like that. On defense, though, as a triple commit on the front post kind of leaves them open to a shot. Finally, they are able to get the control and get the ball out of here, but that was a very, very close one for Howard. Finally, though, we are seeing Champlain get some offensive pressure. Howard is definitely stepping up on the back end. They've got a lot of good defense here, but unfortunately for them, it's been about 30 seconds straight of them locked into their own half. They have to get a good clear here and start some sort of offense, but this one goes high. Billy Gates tried to get it out to Jake and Bake, but couldn't quite get the shot on. Still, not the end of the offense quite yet. We keep mentioning it. Our community college needs to get a good clear like they just did, but it doesn't matter if they can't follow it up. Good follow-up from Pulse. This could be an opportunity. It's in the middle. Logs and trees a little bit delayed on that one but luckily enough for Howard they will be able to turn this into at least an efficient offense logs and trees his shot though is off target and so is the follow-up from Pulse two good opportunities in a row for ACC but they cannot convert but they at least have their offensive firepower back another shot on target and you can see that ACC are here to absolutely decimate one thing I'm noticing from Champlain community is or sorry from Champlain is that they don't really have the kind of defensive prowess to stand up to HCC consistently. We see Howard getting so much pressure over and over and over again, and a lot of bunching up and triple commits around the net. So Champlain, they're gonna have to kind of shape up that defensive rotation in order to make sure that Howard doesn't get a quick goal in through a potential opportunity that whatever may happen from a triple commit. 
Yeah, that happens a lot, it seems like, in our second division here. That's what happens in our challengers divisions, is that a lot of these teams, they start to get frustrated on defense or on offense or wherever, and all of a sudden they start overcommitting to one half of the field or another. Speaking of which, exactly what we see here, so much offensive pressure for CCE that it's a scramble to get back. And as there's a challenge at midfield out of Humphreys and Jake and Bay can't quite control this one in the corner, open net to shoot upon. Just as you called it out, Keegabyte, all of a sudden, HCC are up 2-0 to zero off of some more poor defense out of Champlain. Well, hey, I calls him as I sees him, you know, and that, that's that's just an unfortunate mistouch on the backboard. You can't be missing those when you have three members of the opponents pushing up hard and there's a miss there. That's going to leave an opportunity for Howard to push this one through. But Champlain is able to come through and get that touch out of there. Billy Gates back into center and logs and trees gets a quick clear. It looks like Champlain is trying to go for some counterattack action here, but I'm not sure if that's going to be enough to take down Howard when Howard has been shown to be efficient both on offense and defense at getting those clears. Yeah, not only that, their stat sheet alone pretty much puts them at even just minus the fact that they're shooting more. They had 10 total shots throughout this game versus their opponents four, but they're both tied up at four saves apiece. So as much as it's been an efficient offense for Howard here, they've had a solid back line as well. And it's the reason that even when CCE had an efficient offense, they were able to hold them off and keep them at zero goals. This has been a shutout so far through four minutes. And to be honest, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Now this is Rocket League. So all of a sudden Champlain could start popping off here, but they don't have a lot of time to do so. Only a minute left. They've got to get at least some momentum on their side. Otherwise, they're going to go into game two with a shutout entirely. And speaking of which, they might even get scored on a third time. Here it comes Howard once again with their offense. Double commit in the corner is going to leave Humphreys alone, but a good clear should buy some time. Maybe we can see some offense out of Champlain yet. Well, Champlain, they need to get a goal probably right here to even give them a chance to come back into this one. 40 seconds they need that 30 seconds to be able to get that last one that's about all that you can reasonably ask for to come to get a goal every 30 seconds i mean sure it happens you know less or more frequently than that sometimes but that is not consistent now champlain will have to dig back out of the hole that they have dug for themselves a couple bad defensive stands by Champlain leads to two critical goals from Howard. And I think that's how we're going to see the game end here is the 10 second timer will flash on the screen. Maybe going to get one here, though. OK, OK, Champlain, we might see them pull off a niner. I mean, hey, listen, it's Rocket League. We've seen crazier things happen. They have enough time that if this kickoff goes right, they can take it to overtime. And honestly, if they do that, all of a sudden they've got the momentum on their side. HCC would absolutely hate to lose in such devastating fashion. Oh, and they might not, though. Good clear out to the side is going to leave one last attack here. Humphreys, though, cut off by Pulse. This one still will stay up in the air, but not for very long. Howard Community College will finish this one. Not going to get the shutout, but they do still have a pretty dominant performance aside from one late goal there. Howard Community College were in control for a majority of that game. They were, but don't forget what I said and in the pregame here. Champlain, they are a team that likes to take a little bit longer to feel out their opponents, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. We said that they might not show up in the first game. Towards the end of that first game, though, we did start seeing some life from them. So I want to see Champlain come out, fix that defensive effort that they are putting up there, that bunching up, not going to get the job done against Howard. Let's hope they can fix that because their offense was at least fairly efficient. They were holding down the midfield line pretty well. It's that defense that caused them all their problems. So let's hope they can shape that back up and really show Howard what they have as well as show the rest of us what they have. Absolutely. And, and another big part about that is, is that your defense is where all of your offense is going to start. If you don't hold a good back line, how do you expect yourself to get a good clear out to start a good passing play to start, you know, the momentum that then takes you into an efficient offense. So they can try and play with a solid offense all they want with minimal pressure, but it's going to be a lot easier for everybody on the field if they can have a good back half and then run that into a better front half. But again, this is all a lot easier said than done. We have a bird's eye view here of the pitch. So we're just kind of giving them the advice that we can give give them but at the same time these teams need to make sure that they take these adjustments as the series goes on because even though this could be helpful now future into uh, later on into the series as we've seen these teams are resilient they make the adjustments as time goes on and they put most of these series to five games so for right now it's going to be about making those necessary adjustments as we roll into the second game um and, but and looking at it do you think that there still needs to be adjustments for howard as well so at the moment 
I don't see anything particularly wrong from Howard. They have a tendency to get maybe a little bit antsy on offense, but it's not egregious. It seems to be more just fitting into their style of play. I, I like what I'm seeing from the team movement, from the positioning and the spacing from Howard. So at the moment, I don't really have any notes for them. The biggest thing is going to be for them, we, we know that we're going to see Champlain adjust to this how is Howard going to counter that adjustment? Are they going to be able to make it on the fly, or are we going to have to see them wait till after the next game to make the adjustment to whatever Champlain's doing? I mean, there's there's no timeouts in NECC, so they're not going to have much time either way. But it's going to come down to how, adapt, how adaptable are they to what Champlain gives them? And I, it, that's going to be the key as to whether Howard can win game two, because I think... I honestly think game two, Champlain has the advantage going into it because they, ha they have that advanced knowledge of, of how Howard is playing and can make the adjustment. Is Howard going to be able to predict it? It's going to be a very, very hard guess to make here. And I believe that Howard can. As we've mentioned previously, both of these squads come in here at four and one. So they are resilient. They are strong. And they've been able to do these type of adjustments before. But again, it's really not as cut and dry as we've been making it out to be. These adjustments are nowhere near as easy as we have said they are. It really is going to be one of these things where if the teams are resilient enough, they should be able to run this one back. But at the same time, if they start to fall apart, if that momentum from game one shifts any more in favor of Howard, this could just be a sweep. These teams have also been able to take sweeps before. Matter of fact, Howard Community College started their second week with a 3-0 win against Becker. And then went on to also win two other games or two other series at three to one. So they are no they are no stranger to taking the momentum and running with it. However, for Champlain, like we said, they're also no stranger to taking this to Game 5. They won last week against West Point in the Game 5, so we know that they've got the resiliency. We know that they've got the wherewithal to try and bring this one through here, but it's going to be a very big test here in Game Number 2 to see what type of team we're going to see today. Are we going to see a team like, uh, what's it called, like Champlain, who, is gonna, who gets swept by NTC 3-0, to zero, or are we going to see a Champlain team that comes back with even better ferocity in Game Number 2 and starts to show us what they're made of? Again, all theoreticals here. I really, truly hope that at the end of the day, no matter what, no matter which team comes out on top, I just want to see a good series, a good back and forth between the two of them. Casters are always looking for a game number five. And honestly, I think that this series has the making of one. Yeah, and, you know, since we were talking about um, momentum in there a little bit, this first game especially, and maybe the first part of the series, could be an extension of what we saw from Howard. He said that Howard, they won two, lost one, then won two. They're on a two-game win streak coming into this. Champlain has only had one-game win streak against West Point, and that one's a game five. So they might be feeling maybe a little bit scared, maybe a little bit vulnerable, and they're definitely vulnerable as Pulse just exploits the giant hole in the defense. This is the same thing we saw game number one. Champlain came out a little bit lackluster, just sort of, you know, stretching, waking up, taking the yawn, making their morning coffee. And well, in the middle of all of that, all of a sudden, Howard just came through the side of their house with a car and just scored on them. So one to zero here. Howard continue to dominate. Oh, but not for very long, I don't think. There Finally, we, go. we see a response out of Champlain as they equal out the score line one to one. HCC makes a mistake and Champlain capitalizes. That, that is exactly what you need to do to get back into these types of, of uh, matches where you're kind of maybe playing down a little bit, but CCE, they are strong, they are resilient, they will continue to fight this, and we see that they come back from a quick goal with a quicker goal of their own. 1-1 one, one now, as HCC has the pressure. If, if Champlain's defense can stand up to this and maybe get a good counterattack out of things, pass to clear, maybe find a couple, they're going to be really strong against this HCC defense that doesn't seem to get back in time most of the time. It, it seems that their their third kind of lingers up feud a little bit too long. Oh, what? Well, Logs. Logs. <laughs> Listen, I don't know if he was lingering here a bit too long. I think he was perfect place, right timing there. Logs and trees with a ridiculous shot out of the corner. That's the other thing that CCE have to be careful of because as good as they may get, as strong as their defense might become, if Howard Community College just starts popping off and we see the logs and trees that we saw in season zero last season here at the NECC, it's going to be hard to stop them. Two to zero here, and it could be three as it's even more offensive pressure already out of Howard Community College. Well, a little bit of a clearance by Champlain, but Howard is going to send that one right back in off the post. 
No save necessary, luckily, because that was a missed save all the way. Humphreys back out to Billy Gates. We need to see those passes to clears, but we need to see them go a little bit farther because Howard Community is just stuffing that midfield line full of defenders everywhere you look. There it is, a response from Newble. And that's exactly what we're seeing from Howard Community, which is making them so much more efficient than Champlain. They will keep that offensive pressure going until their third man lingers up a little bit too long. It's the same thing we've been mentioning is this offensive pressure is so solid until it is not. Poles tries to go for a 50-50 out of midfield there. Really just trying to buy time for Nubel to get back and get some sort of save. But unfortunately, not quite able to do so and is tied up yet again here. 3.30 and we are seeing the necessary adjustments here out of CCE. They are taking advantage of the missed rotations out of Howard right now. This was something they did not do in game number one and for them to make that adjustment in game number two is absolutely critical to their survival in this series. Yeah, and the plane plays in, in, and the longer the series go, the better they look. I mean, we're only, what, two minutes into game two, but they're already looking night and day from how they did before. <laughs> Just like taking advantage of that brief mistake, that brief mistouch by Pulse. Just not where you want that save to go. Couldn't get the angle out. And then Billy Gates just reads it, puts it through. Bing, bang, bong. There we go. Champlain now has the lead over HCC. Very different from last game. Incredibly different from last game for a number of reasons. And I think one of the biggest things for that change here is that Howard don't look as comfortable as they did in game number one. Howard game number one really seemed like they were in control of the way that the pace of, uh, that the pace of the field was going. They really were making sure that no matter what, even if there was some pressure out of their opponents, they stayed grounded. They made sure that they could take deep breaths and keep themselves in the series. Now we see a little bit of panic set in. They're making rotations that they probably shouldn't be. They're in odd positions and often are off, more often than not, excuse me. And then they're also making touches that aren't as necessary. Now, do I think they're out of the series entirely? Absolutely not. But you can tell that the panic has set in and that they are way less comfortable than they were in game number one. And, well, CCE are taking full advantage of that. The reason of why they are up three to zero is just, or three to two, excuse me, is straight up because they are taking advantage of the mistakes being made. Speaking of which, another double commit, but no one is able to capitalize. Jake and Bake wanted the follow up shot, but unfortunately, it's another opportunity gone awry for CCE. Well, they're going to have plenty more because HCC kind of looks like they are playing a little bit scared right now, which is not something we're used to seeing from them. We're, we're used to seeing them want to go, 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 get a little bit antsy even, and maybe overcommit sometimes. But now we're seeing the exact opposite, some uncertainty as to which 50s they should be taking. And we see that CCE is all over that. The, the ball is getting left for so long that CCE can just do whatever they want to with it. Although Pulse, that's unfortunate. This is going to be an opportunity. Humphreys comes up and tries to make the shot, but a double save from HCC. Make sure it doesn't go in. One more opportunity. Jake and Bate going to come up and try and get the redirect, but it does get saved out. And now an opportunity for Howard to put this one back on target, but well collected on the other end by Champlain. So a lot of back and forth Rocket League. And then a bad 50 just leads to the Billy Gates score. You gotta be kidding me, Billy. I, I mean, listen, I know it's not calculated, but man, what a shot from the other end of the field here to pop that one on in. And I understand that, you know, shots like that are incredibly rare and that there's pretty much no way to predict it, but I can't help but feel that if they had a defender on the back half there, that was an opportunity to be saved. There was a chance that someone off of Howard could have saved it. Instead, they're pushed so far up that once again, they have a defensive misrotation and aren't able to be in the right place at the right time here. So. Game number one was all offense for Howard. You could see that they, while they did keep a good back line, the offense was the biggest highlight of their game. Game number two, all of a sudden, it just doesn't really seem like they've been able to click as much. The flow that they had in game number one just isn't there, and it just doesn't seem to have the same lethality as before, especially when you pop it off the far end out. Two to four, it will remain as Howard squander another opportunity. They could have brought themselves within one here, Keeg, and unfortunately, it looks like they might fall victim here in game number two. Maybe, but we did see Champlain come back late. We might see Howard do the same thing, but Champlain has just had full control of this ball at the midfield for this entire second half of the game. Howard looked good early, but just Champlain has just made the adjustment on the fly, and that's exactly what I was talking about pregame. Howard now is going to be put on the spot to try and make adjustments for what Champlain is giving them. And 
is Chambly, look, look at how calm they are now on their rotations. They let that ball go so far back into their zone. Now they're just letting themselves hold out on defense. Much stronger for Champlain. And at this point, it feels though Howard just kind of has to kind of cool down. They, they can't let themselves get into their own heads. Just play their game, play how they were in game one, and they'll be fine. Absolutely. Game number two was just an absolute mess for them, especially considering the fact they can't even let the ball die here, and it's not in their favor right now. CCE look to put an emphasis on this one. They want a statement in game number two. Off the backboard, Billy Gates is there, and 5-2 to two, the final score line. Even in crunch time, they are going to play their hardest here after going down 2-1 to one in game number two to come back with a 5-2 to two score line in game number two, or excuse me, game number one and then game number two. CCE look dominant so far. That was just a gorgeous little redirect from Billy Gates there too. Just a little over the top, doink, just very soft touch. And he really stood out on this one. 4-1-1-7 scoreline. That, that is a huge MVP scoreline for your team. He, the, the Billy Gates and Jake and Blake connection really seems to be the bread and butter for Champlain. Humphreys, he's been kind of sitting back, playing that third man, and he's been doing it pretty well. But that Billy Gates and Jake and Blake, that is where your money is, Champlain. That is where your offensive production comes from. And I want to see more from them and continue that. Maybe Humphreys comes up and gets a surprise goal every now and then. That would be interesting to see as well but as, as as far as adjustments for howard what do you think that they have to be doing here bass they've got to stop they've got to try and figure out other ways to get their offense to be efficient yes we do appreciate if you can have some offensive pressure and keep that into your opponent's half but when you start over committing when you start having your third man challenge out at midfield and super risky challenges all it does is make the counterattacks for cce even easier and that was what cce was thriving on was counterattacks where acc would give them an open net or give them an opening to go across the field and all of a sudden they would just dominate so for Howard right now, it's about trying to figure out a different plan of attack here. I think that they've got offensive efficiency in droves here. If they can try and do that with maybe some solo plays or something with a little bit less risk, maybe infield passes that don't necessarily come out of the corner, I think they've got a shot here. But they've got to try and do uh, play some better risk management. Otherwise, they're going to leave themselves vulnerable for the entirety of game number three. And it looks like they might already do so. Jake and Bake off to a strong start here. And unfortunately, it's just more issues on the back end here for Howard already. Yeah, this is just, oh, what a beautifully planned kickoff from Champlain there. And you can tell that one was planned. Jake and Bake was there ready for that one to send it into the net. So this is just Champlain now adding an extra level of depth to their game, making the play or making the kickoffs count. This one might count as well, but there it is for Pauls. Jake and Bate comes up and gets another touch on this one. It's going to roll center. No touch from Howard. Two men jump on that one in the form of Billy Gates and Humphreys. But Billy Gates keeps this one in the zone. Howard is just not able to get these clears against Champlain, who are just 50 everything. The response is coming out so fast. Every touch from Howard has a response. Game number one, Howard seemed in control. They could get three or four touches in a row without Champlain getting a single touch in. Now, all of a sudden, it's a complete reversal here. Champlain have just been dominant over and over and over again. They leave themselves time. They even leave time for their opponents to clear it out, but we cannot see Howard get an efficient touch. It's a combination of boost starving. It's a combination of good positioning. It is just dominance overall here as Champlain took one game to get warmed up and from there on out said, yeah, this is our series to win only a minute into game number three and already this is looking like a one-sided affair we mentioned that we need to see some sort of change out of howard in terms there of we offense. Go. now i think we need to see a change in defense as oh my god cce continue to clip here they do not find the back of the net for a second time but you can just see their offense is starting to dazzle Ooh, the boost management from Howard as well could use some work. I just saw on that little push by Pauls there, missed two 100 boosts and had zero the whole way. And now we see Nubel pushing up with zero. Howard is mostly starved at this point. Logs and Trees has a little bit, but not enough to get that challenge away from Jake and Bake, who flicks it over top into the top left corner. Great placement. But it, Howard's decision-making at this point seems a little bit rushed if you ask me I, it's it's it, 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 they're pushing up with zero boost and that's really you can't be doing that against a champlain roster who is looking for counterattacks. 
Oh, absolutely. And I mean, we mentioned this before. They looked like they were in a panic. They did not look comfortable. And as a result, it just kind of made for a very weird back half for Howard, which then didn't really lead into an efficient offense. They've got to take a deep breath here. We mentioned it all the time on cast about the reset, the mental reset. Just take that long deep breath. Say, hey, we have got this. We're going to regain from here on out. Oh, and an cool. own goal might give them the start here. That was probably not the play that Champlain was hoping for. I mean, absolutely not. It looked like Humphreys was trying to chip that one across net, but Jake and Bake was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Didn't rotate into back post and rotating into mid. And that uh, has a tendency to happen when you rotate in that location. So that's going to be now a one goal game. Howard community still behind, but Champlain well controlled in their own zone. Pulse goes up and gets a good high 50 to keep the ball moving for Nubel. Drops over to Logs and Trees. Pulse, great flick. No one is back for Champlain. And all of a sudden, Howard ties it up. Well, that's all it takes. Sometimes it's one misrotation, one poor play for a team, and they start to crumble here. And unfortunately, that might be exactly what we're seeing for CCE. The own goal seems to have gotten in their head after a 2-0 lead is crumbled into a 2-2 tie with only about 30 seconds. This is uh, definitely not what we're hoping to see out of CCE after such a dominant game number two and such a strong start to game number three. We're finally seeing them be vulnerable for the first time in quite some time. Howard have got to take advantage of of this they do not want to let any more momentum go back in favor of their opponents and they will not allow it to from two to zero down to three to two up logs and trees finds the third goal for his team and all of a sudden howard community are back on top hey bass what if i told you that there's still two minutes left in this game two <laughs> full minutes left in this game and we've already had a momentum swing back and forth Roller coaster one. This is fitting for the map that we're currently on. Roller coaster in the background. That's exactly what this game is. So, uh, Champlain, I like what they're putting out here, but they need to shape up that defense again. It seems to be kind of faltering a little bit, and they need to bring it back together. And kind of, they're rotating front post a lot. Rotating front post is not how you get this done. Rotate back post. Make sure you're there to sweep the goal and get a clearance whenever you need it quick way to turn defense into offense and that's what we're seeing Howard start to adjust to here as well defense into offense is very quick for them They've got much better counterattacks and much better transitions than we saw in game number two here. And it's giving them a lot better life. And even their challenges out of midfield are a lot less risky and a lot more calculated. So we're seeing a much stronger Howard team. And unfortunately for CCE, they're making defensive errors. Another good example of that perfectly plain in sight here. Humphreys is in net. They have no reason to rush this as Billy had already gone for the initial challenge to force an awkward touch out of logs. You sit in net there, you've got a chance to save that. You rush early, you give yourself no chance whatsoever cce with a complete defensive breakdown and you can tell how different of a game this is just based on stat line alone two saves to cce three to howard the emphasis has been offense all game number three and hcc with six shots as well they've been on the offense a lot more cce with six as well but all of that is to jake and bake and you can't rely on one person and you can't Oh, you can't have your defense fall apart like that in the backfield. This is just the same over and over again. We keep mentioning the misrotations, the errors that we are seeing out of CCE. I truly do believe that this can start just being accounted to communication at a certain point. Sometimes you need to see a team just sit there and go, all right, well, we're not playing so well so far. We're going to wipe this one off and go into a completely different game number four. And unfortunately, that's exactly what we're going to need to see. Yes, there is a minute left here, but honestly, I don't see a CCE coming back within that last minute. Champlain have not looked bad, but they don't look like they have enough momentum to all of a sudden swing this game in favor of them by scoring even more goals than they've managed in four minutes so game number four is going to look like it's going to happen well it would happen either way but game number three looks like it's going in favor of hcc after a pretty devastating game number two loss we said it in the last one we needed to see some adjustments out of acc now in game number four what do we need to see out of cce out of champlain if they want to try and win this one and take us to a game number five well, we've been talking about their defense having problems, right? That That's number one. We've been talking about them not jumping on their offensive opportunities. That's number two. But what if I told you that both of those faults come down to the exact same problem, and that's that they're not jumping on the ball fast enough. We need to see faster challenges from CCE here. 
They've been letting the ball roll into their own zone far too far, and it's fine if you do that and you have it fully controlled, but they've been allowing HCC to come up and get good 50s. We saw that CCE was doing the exact same thing that HCC was in the first half of the game, and then HCC made the adjustment and came back. They need to figure out who's going on each challenge and then execute it. Their their communication needs to improve on that front and their decision-making needs to improve on that front. I feel as though if CCE can get their mind back into it and kind of go through and get good challenges, good fast challenges, then we'll see them in a much better spot and we'll see that ball in the offensive zone for them a lot more frequently as well. Yeah, it just comes down to Rocket League fundamentals sometimes, which is a lot of teams, when they get to a bit of a higher level, especially towards Grand Champ and higher Grand Champ, they start to make a little bit more of some intricate plays, which don't always really pan out in the long run. Sometimes the fundamentals are, well, they're the fundamentals for a reason, a solid three-man rotation, basic touches that lead to other touches for your teammates, good passing play, stuff like that. Although they may not be as flashy as a flip reset or a nice dribble on the ground, they can work out a lot better in a lot of instances because they allow you more pressure and they allow you a solid rotation after said attack so for this third or for, excuse me for this fourth game we need to see a complete adjustment out of cce go back to how they were rotating in game number two where it really looked like they had a strong offense as well as defense last game we saw some good offense but we really didn't see that defense that stepped up as well so this is going to be an important game number four if they do not win this one champlain will go down in four however if howard community win this one they will wrap this series up in four and i think they might just want to do that won't even want a game number five but a lot easier said than done as already both teams are off to a strong battle here. This one's going cross court. It's not quite in. Nubu with a last second save, but my oh my. It looks like game number four is going to be as high octane action as ever. Well, it sounds like CCE was listening to me. They're jumping on all of these challenges very quickly, and that's going to pay off there as Humphreys gets it to Billy Gates. Billy Gates off the wall. Is anyone going to be there for CCE? No, no one jumps on that one, though. That's unfortunate, but now Nubu... He will jump on this one pretty quickly. Tries to get a good flick, but Humphreys was ready for it. And CCE already seeing a lot more decisive. They can't miss those, though. Oh. Off the post by HCC. Billy Gates giving chase. Nubles up high. He's not going to have the boost to get to this, though. And Humphreys will get a good 50. And it will go over to Jake and Bake. Miss, though, from Jake and Bake. And Billy Gates is there in the backfield, thankfully. Otherwise, that would have been a complete whiff from CCE. And HCC probably would have ended up with a goal there. But we play on at zero as Champlain trying to fix those defensive errors and get to this ball a lot quicker, but some of the misses are hurting him. Yeah, this is a, I will say this game definitely hasn't been as consistent as some of the other ones we have seen so far. We know both of these squads are extremely capable. Well, right now, it looks a little bit like a panic. Both teams have upped their pace here in game number four because they're just trying to keep the other team uncomfortable as well. Neither team wants to be the first one to admit that they can't keep up this pace of play and unfortunately I think the first goal we're going to see is going to come off of a pretty crucial error as we've seen a couple so far just none of them capitalized upon speaking of which though plenty of space here now ACC can they run with this one Howard have got an opportunity Billy can't make the touch off the backboard Logs and Trees is going to get a good pass out to Pulse but that one goes high as well Pulse needed to take a shot with so many awkward defenders there and without the final shot coming through it's back to another stalemate as we near halftime here Game number four looks to be a nail biter. Both teams do not want to be the first to make that mistake. Humphreys will not be that person, but they do clear it out to the center. That could have been a shot out of logs and trees, but instead it'll be an offense for Howard. But it, oh no, Nubel And again, there are multiple opportunities we are seeing here where HCC could slot in a shot, but instead they just keep putting it to the sides or off the bar over and over again. Please, Howard gets something in. They cannot. A ton of extended pressure here, but somehow Champlain walk away unscathed. Well, from a surface to, from a surface perspective, Champlain might look a lot faster this game, but unfortunately, a lot of their challenges on the defensive side have been the same story. Not exactly challenging when they should. There could be some communication errors here too. Pulse not able to put that one on target as Humphreys gets a crucial save crossed all the way. Humphreys and Jake and Bake both on the wall. They both back off of this one. Someone needed to be on that ball. Nubel. Intercepts it at midfield. Billy Gates goes for the touch. He does get a good 50. That's going to drop it down. Nubel on target. Gets a shot. Billy Gates gets the save. And the cleanup by Pulse. 
HCC goes out to the lead, and once again, we see the same problems for Champlain. They're just not getting to these touches fast enough. Finally, I can take a breath there, holding my breath for pretty much the entirety of that game. It was, it was just shot after shot after shot after shot after shot for ACC there. Howard continued to pepper the back. Of, well, not can't even say the back of the net. Let's call it the backboard there. Amounting nine total shots versus the two out of CCE. And really, this feels like the game for Howard to win. If they lose this one, the amount of momentum going against them will just be unsurmountable. And I think that in game number five, we would see CCE. CCE take it but to be fair we've got to get there first in order for us to see that game number five Howard have got to slip up and Champlain have got to take advantage because so far it has been all Howard here in game number four all Howard all day I think this ball has been in the orange zone for well over 60 percent of the time that it has been on the field and 60 percent might not seem like a lot but what you, that's exactly what you're seeing here is a 60 percent offensive stand that is actual dominance by Howard Community College. They have not let this ball get past midfield much at all, and only long clears have, but even those long clears, they're not well controlled by Champlain, just like this one. Humphreys gets a 50. That goes all the way back into the blue defensive third, but well controlled by Howard, and they will be able to get this clear or at least control this ball. They do pass to clear, new to logs and trees, and he will give chase. Gates looking to get the pass to center. No one is there, though though off the ceiling this is still more offensive pressure and to be honest they don't even really need this offensive pressure they just need to be able to hold down the back line a two goal lead is pretty comfortable here for Howard unless they completely fall apart on defense I don't see them losing game number four matter of fact they will even pick up a highlight play in a half logs and tree said yeah, I know you guys have seen us score goals today but have you seen us score this what on earth is that angle you talk about logs and trees. It could have felled the forest with that shot. <laughs> blowing everybody away. Gorgeous redirect from logs and trees. That's reminiscent of some stuff I've seen in RLCS even. Fantastic angle to put Howard up, cut above Champlain. They will get this win. Three to one. And what a win it was for Howard. A slight slip up in game two. But that's not going to matter as Pulse just gives the own goal. And that'll be all here for this matchup. And, it, you know, it, it all comes down to just Champlain. They just didn't get to these touches fast enough. Their defense broke down too often. Too many mistakes on their side. It just was one of these things where I felt like the panic set in and it never really went away. It felt like the entire time HCC were trying, or excuse me, ACC were in the lead, that CC, that Champlain just kind of were trying to catch up over and over again. We saw them get into opportunities. We saw them get into places where maybe all of a sudden they could flip the momentum here, but they never really got to that point and never were able to climb past that peak and put the momentum back in their favor. So throughout that entire game, it was a dominant performance out of Howard Community College and honestly, well played to them i can't even say that this is one of these things where all of a sudden champlain fell apart and they just took advantage of it this was basically they just never gave champlain a chance to start to begin with and howard just were so dominant that it always looked like a one-sided affair there so congratulations howard community college very well done all around uh cce i do think that you guys have got a bright future but it's a bit of a uh, back to the drawing board for right now to put it simply yeah and and uh, it's Champlain, they have to get those team communication errors worked out because I, I I get the feeling it all comes back to that. They're not knowing who's going for those touches, so they can't commit on them. And I hope that they work that out because they, if they can just jump on that ball about 10% faster, they'll be in such a better position. But they need to jump on that ball that 10% faster. And that, that was their biggest downfall here today. It, 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 and in game two, they fixed it. They had it fixed. They were jumping on that ball quick. They were on the offensive rotations. Passes look clean. Clears look clean. And then in game three and four, they just lost it. Maybe it was because of, of a momentum switch in game four. Fine. We can chalk it up to that. Rocket League is half momentum anyway. But in game three, they definitely did not look like the same team in game two. So consistency needs to be there as well.
And unfortunately, that's something we sometimes see, especially I would say at the challenger level, is that momentum is such a heavy factor in these series. These teams are very much, you know, they see the momentum f fall in one way or the other, and they can write off games before they are even finished. And sometimes it's the teams that are the most resilient that stand out the most that really do show themselves as the better of the of their region. But for right now, both of these squads don't necessarily look like they are better or worse of their region. They just both look like two squads that you know, one had a dominant second half of the series, the other one did not. And I still do. Think I think both of these squads have a great chance in the latter half of the season as they really do have good records already and can probably do a pretty good uh, postseason run if they continue to have said momentum. So for right now, we're going to congratulate Howard Community College as they did do a phenomenal job throughout that game. And uh, really for CCE, you guys, I think, are very well aware of what you need to do in order to change up the momentum as you go into the rest of the season. Definitely an impressive performance so far, but we definitely need a, uh, some minor adjustments, I would say, as we continue throughout here. But I think as we're trying to get someone in here, we might have a chance to get at least a couple of words in with the Howard Community College team, or at least one of the players from there. If we can get them in, we would love to have a chance to ask him about the momentum in that series uh Gee, i gotta imagine that out of everything we saw throughout that series what do you think the comms were like when that final shot well actually i can't say final shot but the third shot went in in game number four i gotta imagine that was kind of the yep th that's it boys we're we're pack it up we're going home yeah th that would have been just a huge sign or j just like a huge sigh of relief uh, for Howard Community College when they get when they got that last one in and it does look like we have a member of the HCC team in here We have logs and trees joining us for a quick interview. How are you doing logs? I'm good real happy after that win. How are you doing? Doing, bad, fantastic. So just, doing fantastic just yeah, just just watch an absolute dominant performance by you guys at least in games three and four so yeah. <laughs> real quick here can you tell us about the kind of perspective shift for those first three games it, like, it, so your initial game plan and then what adjustments you had to make well uh, our initial game plan was to just go in and try to play fast have good comms and everything and uh if i remember right we won the first game right so yeah yeah that that, that went well but then in the second game uh they, they, they kind of stepped it up like uh jake the bake is kind of kind of cracked like <laughs> <laughs> but uh <laughs> I, th I think I think in the end, like we really just won because of our good comms and teamwork. Like, uh, I'm kind of losing my voice here. We were we were yelling a lot in comms. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's your answer, Bass. They were apparently yelling a lot about it. I mean, I, I can't blame them, especially we were mentioning it before you hopped into this call. Game number four, you guys were up two to zero, then all of a sudden you hit the nuttiest angle off the oh, backboard. Thank you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> did that was that pretty much we were saying that that was sort of the nail in the coffin. Did you guys hit? Oh, yeah. Did you hit that shot and you were kind of like, that's it, we're done. Yeah, I called it too. I was like, I got the, I got the double tap, and then <laughs> and then we scored, and uh, yeah, it erupted. Yeah, we were a lot of fun. That was a ridiculous angle too. That 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 looks that kind of accuracy. How how consistent is your team with those kinds of like um, high mechanical or like high readability plays? See, that, that's that's the funny thing. Usually, I'm the person like uh, missing the tight angles. <laughs> <laughs> But no, no, no. I, we, uh, we, we did really well these series. We, we hit a lot of the shots, too. Yeah. I mean, you guys absolutely dominated in game number four there. Obviously, not as necessarily much dominations through game one through three, but you kept some resilience, and you really did a great job throughout the series. Obviously, you have a great record now. You guys advanced to five and one. You are a very strong team here in your region, but you guys have a lot of the season left to, uh, to go, as well as you also have playoffs coming up here despite the fact that you were five and one is there any team that you're at least a little bit weary of uh seeing for the rest of the season who do you think is your biggest competition in your uh division right now uh honestly not not worried at all like uh I'm, I'm like, <laughs> okay. you know the, the the better the team you know like <laughs> the harder they fall is that what they say <laughs> <laughs> i mean well, yeah i mean the bigger they are the harder they fall i guess yeah yeah <laughs> exactly well I, uh, I wish you luck in those upcoming matches. For right now, we're going to let you go and celebrate with your team. Uh, Logs, anyone you want to shout out before we let you go, brother? Yeah, shout out to uh, Giovanni, uh, ICO, and uh, Bricks for uh, tuning into the stream. And then also shout out to the, the team and coach for real pulling through. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right, thank you, <laughs> Logs. Thank you for coming through here so, so much. We're going to let you go, brother. Have a good one. All right, thank you. See ya. All right, All right. well... That's the end of the first one, brother. What a first series it was. So happy to finally get you into the NECC. And I think you got a banger for your very first series, my friend.
Oh, yeah. It was a great series to be in, but we are not done here today, Bass. I think we have another even more spectacular match coming up here. So, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between or otherwise on the stream right now, in a couple minutes, we're going to have Montclair State versus Potomac State coming right at you here in just a minute. Stick around. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing.
What sound experience would you like to have? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the NECC Rocket League week number six. My name is Bass in the Past, and joined alongside me once again is the one and only Keeg by Keeg. We just went into East Challengers Division. Now we are moving up into East Champions. We have got Potomac State versus MSU Montclair State University. This is going to be a battle and a half. How are you doing this fine afternoon, my friend? I'm doing all right. You know, it's been it's been uh, it's been a time lately, a bit stressed out, but I'm doing well today. And for those of you who are just joining us from maybe these two schools coming in to watch, by the way, I'm new to NECC. Hi, I'm Kigabyte. I'm an RLCS caster for a couple other places, but I'm joining you guys for some streams today. So this, like you said, Montclair State and Potomac State, both these teams having a uh, th a three and two and a two and two record as Montclair State had a bye last week. So. We are looking at which of these two teams is going to take the momentum that they currently have and roll with it. Montclair State might not have a ton. As before their bye week last week, they did take a, a harsh loss to Durham in Game 5. Meanwhile, Potomac State also won a loss to Durham in Week uh, 5. So Durham really showing up and uh, taking both these teams out. So that being said... Which do you? Which of these two teams? We've seen them on stream before. We've seen them across the course of the season. Which do you think has the advantage here? 
Well, the one thing that I did get to see is I've seen Potomac play before, and one thing I know about Potomac, when they're on, they are on. When they play well, they play incredibly. So, like you said, it's going to be about momentum, seeing how these teams adjust here in game number one. So, if we see a Potomac State that comes out and is just absolutely dominant, I think that this is their series to win. If we see a bit of a lackluster start where it goes, you know, somewhat of uh, feeling out, trying to figure out how the other team wants to play, a little bit of hesitancy, I think that this goes in favor of Montclair. But I am hoping to see, not trying to be, you know, impartial here don't want to cheer one way or the other but i'd love to see potomac state absolutely pop off we saw one of the most ridiculous angles ever out of logs and trees in the last match i'd love to see even more of those ridiculous angles here in match or in series number two for the day but a little bit easier said than done not many people can hit those rlcs caliber shots so I, uh, I really do hope that these teams can necessarily live up to the expectations we have because, honestly, as we always say, it is really up to these players to make sure that they can play to the best of their abilities. The casters just want to see a game number five no matter what. Yeah, and I I think these two teams could send us to a game number five. So we are about to get into it here. There's the kickoff. Let's see who's going to take this early one, and it will be Potomac State. Is they're going to get the early offense here? A little bit of a good push. Rots is going to try and get it down to a teammate. Good 50 by Lifey, and Legacy is there to clean it up. Very quick challenges. Lifey is there with him. Fast and tight offense. I like it from Montclair. So far, this is looking like this is going to be a high-octane series. Some nice passing plays already trying to show themselves, but Azuro can't quite connect in the midfield, and it's going to leave a counterattack here for MSU. Montclair almost able to slot one in early, but instead it will remain a 0-0 scoreline as passes have been the emphasis already. 30 seconds in, multiple passing play attempts, but it only takes one to open it up as 1-0 Montclair, or excuse me, Potomac on top. Yeah, this is just Potomac, the passing plays. They, every time that they have the ball in the offensive zone, they are looking for it. They're looking for teammate center, and I like how they're pushing up to take advantage of it too. They are pushing that third man up, however, so I'm not sure how much I like that too much. So we'll see if they get punished for that at all. They might if we can see Montclair get some really good clears, but Montclair... They don't really like clears too much. They like to kind of push on this offense and try and force mistakes out of their opponents. I'm not sure if we're going to get too much of that from uh, Potomac State here, though, so we'll see. We'll have to find out. Only a minute into this game, so there's plenty of time for both of these teams to make the necessary adjustments. Misses on the backboard, though, are not something you can afford no matter what time in the series it is. Two to zero here. Potomac State take a very definite lead early in this one as it's just a complete whiff on the back end. Open backboard, open net, and we see that exact same thing happen there. Montclair just not able to get back to it, not able to read that ball off the wall. And uh, Potomac State takes advantage of that pretty heavily. Good clear from Goal Food. I do like what we're seeing from Montclair, at least the initial starting of their attempted offensive possessions. They're getting that ball at midfield, holding it well, but the problem is they're not doing anything with it. Committing that second man will be a good idea, and Legacy does commit and puts the ball on target. And what we're seeing is a 1-2 rotation here from Montclair State. And that doesn't work out all the time, but it seems to be working for them, at least for certain pushes. The demo definitely going to be helpful to, you know, use that 1-2 rotation. Like you said, it's not necessarily going to be the most consistent thing. But hey, any momentum in their favor is going to help them out in the long run here as they've cut the lead in half, brought themselves within one. They've got a chance now to try and run with said momentum. And as Lifey does have a pass out here, kind of just throws this to no man's land, though. Dafsi will be there to at least run a distraction, but I don't think they can really afford to do that. Montclair State need to develop some more intricate passing plays, especially if they're going to double commit like that. Dafsi does get a follow-up touch so it'll delay the offense for a moment and then Ross pops it around Ozuro looks like both teams right now are at least a little bit uncomfortable not necessarily unexpected out of game number one as they're just trying to figure out how they want to play but really kind of looks like whatever oh. team doesn't get uncomfortable first is going to take this that was a gorgeous bump there from life he really opened the door but just wasn't able to get the ball on target now Montclair State is going to pass the ball around a little bit, looking for a hole. Legacy does find a little bit of a hole. He's going to try and push it through back to center. Is anyone going to jump on this? No, Dafsi was the only one available, and he knew he was beat. Great interference there by Potomac State, and they're going to try and push on that. Not quite successful. Now we're starting to see Montclair kind of fill in a little bit. They're kind of starting to get a little bit more comfortable here, and Potomac, they're just rolling right along. 
doing pretty well so far oh my word what a save out of daft see though is gonna at least keep this at a one uh one goal advantage here this one gonna stay tense throughout the series as we approach the two minute mark and demos all around here msu have given themselves a great chance but the save by goal food is not gonna allow that one to push on through here montclair are on the verge of putting in that equalizer and they will finally find it enough offensive pressure and they will find the back of the net well, we talked about that Montclair likes to put this pressure on target to force some defensive mistakes, and that's exactly what we saw there out of Potomac State. Everybody kind of clusters in around that goal. Everybody's on top of each other. No one knows who's getting the touch, and you see the results of what happens when that happens. So, Potomac. Yeah, this is, this is just... Potomac is now just having the defensive stand against Montclair. I mean, what do you think they're going to have to do to break this? Well, I mean, honestly, I'd like to say that, you know, it's just get a better counterattack here because it feels like small touches like that out of rots and then just clearing it out like that is not really how it's going to work. Yes, those clears are going to buy your team time, but if no one's following up said clear, you're just giving up a bunch of offensive pressure that could be there. So I like the follow up that we just saw, but as another touch out of life, he gets around the second defender and then gets a shot off. You can just see one team has their counterattacks on lock. The other one is still warm up here Montclair after going down two to zero have just turned this around in the second half of game number one the counterattacks are on point the shots are on point oh my word but I don't think we can count Potomac out quite yet they almost just hit the nuttiest angle we've seen all day that was insane if it had been on target but not quite there as zero or azero excuse me is going to try and put that one on another shot from goal food now both now two players from Potomac pushed up and a good 50 by Rots, or sorry, Goal Food. Rots, Goal Food? One of the two got the 50. There we go, it was Rots. That was a fantastic 50. Had that rolled back, that would have been a definitive advantage pushing on the other way by or for Montclair. And they might have gotten a goal out of it, but Rots just puts his car in the way and says no. I do appreciate that even at this ranking in a competitive environment, goal steals are still flying everywhere. I appreciate that, you know, my tendencies from my diamond gameplay can still show up even at the highest level we've got here in the NECC. 20 seconds left here now, and there is a chance that Potomac State could take this one after going down. Oh, wait a minute. They're almost definitely going to take it. Now I was going to say, after a bit of a rocky comeback here out of Montclair, they have turned the momentum in their favor, and they might have just sealed the deal with that one there gigabyte yeah i think they did 13 seconds left is a bit of a tall ask to get two goals they're gonna have to get one off this kickoff is montclair they might have an opportunity lifey's gonna come get it but he misses legacy gonna try and put this one on for lifey but no one is gonna be there that's gonna be pretty much it right there so potomac state will take game number one and I will say they did not look as dominant across that whole thing. They, 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 they got out to a nice jump, but they really look weak in the mid game. I will say I do appreciate that they made the necessary adjustments as time went on. Rot started to recognize he was 50-50 against pretty much all of their opponents in absolutely dominant fashion here. So you got to imagine that at a certain point, Rots just kind of realized, hey, if I can keep this pressure up at midfield, if I can start winning these 50s on repeat, I'm just not going to allow Montclair any sort of opportunities. And that's exactly what happened there. As Potomac started to recognize where they were getting their benefits and they started to run with those more than anything, rather than trying to push, you know, the same narrative we saw at the beginning, they made the necessary adjustments and sometimes that is what separates team here teams here if they can play with a good amount of adjustment if they can play with that necessary change as time goes on i think that they can win the series but honestly i don't think i think it's far too early to count, to count montclair out of this one we saw how dominant they were once they started to get that offense together if they can get that efficiency again in game number two i think we might see this one go the distance we might see it go the distance and the biggest reason why i'm so sure that we're at least going to see Montclair put up a good fight, if nothing else, is exactly how they clear the ball. There is no dump and run like we're seeing from Potomac. I, I remember on three or four different pushes out, Lifey was just controlling that ball, sitting behind it the whole time, and getting beneficial 50s every time anybody from Potomac jumped on a 50. And, and, and that's just... The more you can do with a single person, the better off you are. And that's exactly what we're seeing from Montclair. One person is getting the clear. They're just pushing it up slowly, getting beneficial 50s. And then their team is just coming in to clean it up. But the question is, is 
Potomac State going to be able to sniff that out? We're going to have to find out. Game number two looks like it's going to be a pretty influential one of the series. And the shots are going to be ridiculous. Are you kidding me? Lifey with the cherry pick in front of the net is going to get the nuttiest redirect I've seen in quite some time. What an insane touch from Lifey. That was just a gorgeous shot all the way around. Montclair State, they're going to get off to an early lead here. 20 seconds in. And they will continue the push. We know that they like to force errors out of their opponents by keeping the ball in their defensive zone for a long time. Now, Azaro. Which, that's a defensive error. This could be something huge here. Montclair with the dunk! What are the goals we're seeing right now, Kigabyte? All of a sudden, game number two has stepped up the caliber tenfold. Everybody here is just going for 50s, and they're all they're all 50 kings right now. They're all fire burners out here right now. And they're just going right for those 50s, and they're getting the hang. To, they're getting the handle on them, which is really good to see. They don't need to do anything else besides just keep going for those 50s, and eventually, it's just Potomac State is out of people to challenge, and then it's just basically an open net for Montclair, and they are just controlling the ball the entire way and not letting Potomac get any sort of momentum. So shut out offense here from Montclair and Daphne is gonna try and put one on target. Was looking for a style shot there. A little bit of a mishandle on the defensive side for Potomac State. Lifey is in the offensive zone, takes a boost. We're seeing a little bit of a boost steal game coming out from Montclair State too, and not extreme, but they're just rotating through when they can. They're trying their best so far here, but this is uh, so far a little bit of a panic type of game here. Since those first two goals we saw out of Montclair, it's been some weird touches on the backboard here. Speaking of which, no one's going to make the save here as Roth puts in a simple floater. Double commit on the corner, but what happened to Daph C here? I thought he would at least be able to make some sort of save, but decides to go up the wall instead. Panic sets in, and all of a sudden, Potomac have cut the lead in half. We're gonna see another comeback from a different team this time. Potomac <laughs> certainly looking like they're challenging that. Gofu gonna put one off the backboard. Medafsi is there at that time. And Azaro gonna put this one on target too, required to get that save. Legacy does end up getting credit for it. Medafsi going to get the good clear. Good controlled clears going upfield from, from Montclair State. And I can't stress that enough. That is the biggest difference between these two teams. The control on the clears. And no dump and run from Montclair. It is not so far. We have seen some really good control out of them. The question is, is whether or not that's going to continue in their favor here. As much as patient play can be advantageous, if we all of a sudden have a team out of Potomac that just starts diving on everything, not giving them the chance to set up these more intricate plays, it's going to be pretty difficult for them to continue with that same strategy. But so far, we haven't really seen that. We've seen a little bit of hesitancy out of Potomac and where there are some places that they could probably shut down the offense out of their opponents. They just haven't quite done that yet. Half of the game still remains, so there's plenty of time for them to make the necessary uh, change-ups, but it's not going to be an easy task whatsoever. Getting themselves another goal here and at least bringing themselves back to a tie would be extremely beneficial, but as MSU have just continued to dominate on offense, I think that's a lot easier said than done. Well, Legacy and the entire side of Montclair are just locking out the Potomac State team from getting any sort of good offensive stance. They're just controlling the ball in their corners the entire time until they can get a good clear. Lifey gets a good 50. Dapsy is going to get that touch. Legacy gets tricked out by it. Dapsy going to have to go up and get that save. Great little snapshot there from Goal Food, but it does not make it into the back of the net. Azaro back up field. Lifey is there. A little bit of a ping pong action going on here as we see both these teams fighting for any kind of pressure that they can get and it does look like potomac is going to win that fight demo on the back side that's going to be a shot on target no one is there for montclair and potomac ties it up and this is just i'm not going to say complete de defensive breakdown but you could see the panic set in for msu almost immediately and they never were really able to find their footing once again demos on the back end definitely going to help continue that panic and all of a sudden, Potomac have found the response that they needed. Might even get themselves a third goal. Not quite able to put that on target. 
Goal Food had a chance to put in that third goal, that real dagger into the heart for MSU here, but instead they'll have to just play this one a little bit more slowly. Dafsi will at least get a 50, try and slow down the offense, and as Rots takes a pretty lackluster shot, I think that might be the end of it. Good pass out of Dafsi and Lifey to start up an offense for Montclair, but it's got to be efficient here again. You see how there's both teams trying to take the time to set up more intricate shots. We need to see one of these two teams start to control the pace of play. If they can get a little bit speedier, if they can just dispossess their opponents before they get the opportunity, I think we'll see a dominant half. But right now, a bit of a stalemate as we get into this last minute of gameplay. I'd love to see an overtime in game number two, but we got to get there first. 30 seconds left and both teams look poised to try and finish it in regulation. We are seeing some changes from Potomac State already. Much more physical offense. They are getting they're getting demos and bumps where it's crucial to prevent these good controlled clears from Montclair that the, that we have been talking about all series. They're going to have to do a little bit more, though, as Montclair is still able to break free, as we see them do there. Azaro to goal food was looking for that one. Did get a touch, but not able to put it on target. And Lifey's just going to tr control this one, trying to get it out of his own zone. Dapsy is able to put this one back up field. Now maybe a potential swing, but no, it hits the boards. And we have overtime. This one's going to be a nail biter for sure. Neither one of these squads wants to give up an easy game number two for MSU here. It's about trying to hold on and keep the series within reach for Potomac. This is about giving themselves the best shot at winning this one as they will be on game point if they can win the second game in a row. Right now, they look to do exactly that. Good pass out of the middle, out of Rots, but no one is going to be there. Despite Azuro and Gold Food being out at midfield, neither one of them wanted to dive on the ball, but rather just keep the offensive pressure up. And while I don't think it's a bad idea, they've got to use these opportunities to their advantage but as we get a double commit or triple commit in front of the net somehow some way Montclair will walk away unscathed my heart stopped for a second there gigabyte I thought that was the end for Montclair I thought so too and we saw right after that they kind of had to get a long uncontrolled clear to kind of catch their breath just to be able to get some boost back up and a good demo there by Gold Food is going to prevent some of the pressure from coming on that could have been a goal had that not been a demo Azaro, 50 with the, with Dafsi. The back to center, Rots is gonna go up for this one. We've seen him do some awesome things. Double commit on the defense. No one is there though for Potomac State. It's gonna get cut across goal again. And no one, once again, for Potomac State is there. They've had a couple really great chances, just not willing to commit that second man when they're not sure of the goal. They're very scared about being counterattacked upon, but honestly, I don't think they should be this hesitant considering how many double and triple commits we have seen out of Montclair. Again, someone's no got to be there. Azura. Azura. Oh, thank God he is there. Potomac State will, e will take a two-game lead here as they finally put in another goal. That, uh, that was a nail-biter for sure. Definitely not the reason I thought it would be a nail-biter, no. though. <laughs> We're just over here screaming, like, put that ball in. It's right in front of the net. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, finally they do find it though Potomac State will take a two game lead here in Gigabyte it's looking like MSU no matter what they do no matter the adjustments they make they just keep trying to claw their way back into the series and just cannot quite get there what do we have to see out of MSU to keep themselves in this series uh, we have to see them kind of shape up their defense and that has been their biggest weakness in both game one and two we've seen a lot of double and triple commits that kind of leave them high and dry and we see them maybe going for boost at inopportune times or something like that and that's not something that they can afford to do when they are being bared down on by potomac state and potomac state on their side we there's a lot more that we could see them do to capitalize on those advantage or on those opportunities that they have but montclair if they don't shape up, though, or if they don't fill in those holes on defense one way or another, they're going to get scored on a lot more because you know Potomac isn't going to let those go often. Yeah, this is not going to be an easy thing for Montclair to try and bring back here. Like you said, the defense is not necessarily up to par quite yet. And the scary thing is, is they had the majority of the saves in that game. So it really goes to show you that saves are not everything when it comes to a defense. Yes, a save is great, but if there's no follow-up touch, if there's no clear afterwards and you can't do anything with that save, it doesn't really matter. So we've got to see a completely different back line here out of MSU. I think that Montclair have got a shot, but it's going to start with also slowing down this offense here as Rot 
tries to go for the pre-flip. Looks like Potomac aren't quite done yet, and they might even get the first goal to boot. That one's going to go off the bar, but already MSU in a panic on their back end. I kind of like at the same time and don't like what we're seeing from Potomac here. They are not committing their second man. They're trying to get solo goals, although here they're going to commit their second man. Rot's trying to get a really ridiculous redirect down into the net. Not quite able to do it. But Potomac is, for their credit, they are playing a very wise game plan if they're not willing to commit that second and maybe even that third person. They're playing clever. The unfortunate part is, is as clever as they are playing, it's starting to be a little bit more predictable. You can tell that MSU are going to be aware. They don't necessarily need to clear it as quickly if there's not going to be another man committing afterwards. So if we all of a sudden see that minor switch where Potomac just start throwing that second man immediately at the net like we just saw at Azuro, look how much time and space they now have. Potomac might actually be picking up on exactly what we're saying. They're starting to put a couple more men downfield and it really could gain them a lot more off offensive pressure might even find them the first goal of the series that was a clever back pass but unfortunately goal food was at least uh, was just a bit too far back but somehow despite that msu are still locked into their half a minute and a half into this game they've got a couple good clears here lifey gets a clutch shot on target but azaro is able to get that clear and that right there that turnaround is exactly why we're seeing Montclair get pushed into their own zone so effectively is because Potomac is getting past the clears. They are getting it out to somebody who, the three is getting it out to the one who is lingering up a little bit, and then the one is just getting a good controlled clear up field, and that's going to give them a goal here too as goal food. Great pass from Rots to get it over two attackers on this 50. Gorgeous here. Oh my word, Rots has just put on a highlight reel so far. Not to take away from anything that Gold Food or Azuro have done so far here, but Rots, whether it's the 50, whether it's the pass, whether it's the shot, all around playing a stellar game here. And there's a lot of the reason that Potomac looked to clear this one in three as they get another ridiculous pass, but that one's off the bar and out. Oh my word, it's a heartbreaker as this should be a 2-0 scoreline for Potomac, but you can see exactly why I'm highlighting Rot so far. He has been electric on both halves of the field. Well, good pass there by Dafsi to Lifey, but Lifey couldn't put it on target. Those have got to be on target, and, and that it, we've seen a lot of that, but just some inaccuracy. I don't feel as though that's Montclair's biggest problem, but we are seeing some inaccuracy from them that has to be shaped up. Rots, great pass to Gold Food again. This connection strong in this game. And Rots' play off the wall, taking Montclair entirely by surprise. Oh my word, all of a sudden we're starting to see the dynamic duo just bust on out here. Batman and Robin have decided that it is time to take down the bad guys and they are doing it in style here. Half of the game left and we've got to see some sort of adjustment out of Montclair State. A good passing play out of midfield will at least give them some offensive pressure. But again, another shot off target. Legacy puts one into the backboard. I'm not sure if that was an intentional one, but really, to be honest, it shouldn't have been intentional whatsoever. Great they demo. needed a shot on target. And as another one arrives, as you mentioned, it's a good demo and a good opening. But the unfortunate part for MSU is as solid the offense has been for Potomac, the defense has stepped up as well. Rots, as we've said, he is fantastic. Good control to get that one at least past two. And he's going to get this one back into their offensive third. Lifey is back there, though, to Legacy. Legacy drops it down for Lifey. Lifey looking for another one, but Lifey off target again. Oh, just over and over again. We see these opportunities for MSU. That's a huge demo. That's dirty. And finally, we put one in. The physical play comes out at the perfect time here, Geek. That was just dirty. Dapsy. Oh. oh my. Filth. Filth. <laughs> Murder. Absolutely. Five. <laughs> and one just, two just, it becomes. Yeah. See, just sees the defender there, flips to car cam, and just removes the defender and then you just see it trickle in that's so demoralizing if you're on the receiving end of that but potomac can't let that get them down they do still have the lead here although we might start seeing a flip of momentum towards montclair as they do have a lot more offensive potential here pressure underway legacy into center life you looking for the shot does get the touch gets it past goal food but rots is there now it's a one-man breakaway versus two ross into center looking for azaro azaro can't get a hold of it and goal food will continue the offensive pressure and finally life he's able to get this one out of here 
But once again, already back in the back is Azuro. He has been a defensive master on the side of Potomac State. He has been the majority of their saves. Lifey, though. Doesn't matter if it's a save if Lifey is just in your face. Oh my, and see, this is what happens when you don't give the save to Azuro. If you give it to anyone else besides him, they're not going to be able to clear it out the same sort of way there. Potomac find themselves the victim of a two or of a second goal out of MSU. And just as soon as we were about to write them off for the series and put this in a sweep in the books, all of a sudden we've got some life left in them yet. MSU look to try and even put in a third here. That one's not going to get into the back of the net as it's a good deflection to survive for just a second. But all of a sudden, Montclair have decided it's time to get the offensive pressure here and the accuracy to boot. Lifey, after missing a plethora of shots to start off this game, has redeemed themselves in the second half as now Montclair are up three to two. Three goals over the span of a minute and a half unanswered on the side of Potomac State. Can Montclair clutch it out here? Good 50 by Goal Food. Azaro is there in the middle, but it goes over to Rots. Rots, good shot. He's not on target. Lifey gets the touch. Someone needs to be there. Someone needs to be on that. And no one was. Potomac might let it go, but it's back over to Rots. Rots might have the control on this one. He's going to get it 50 down into the ground. Potomac had every opportunity to take that game back and send it to overtime, but they don't jump on it. I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to say. I am so confused why Gold Food just turned away from the ball there. He literally just turned away and went away from the ball. That could have been in. That was an open net. The defender was nowhere to be found. They were in the vicinity, but no way they were going to make a save if you just put that one on in. Gold Food, we could be done right now, King. Instead, we go to game number four. MSU finally get themselves a game in this series, and... I, I really don't know what to say. That one, sh we should be in overtime right now. We, we should be casting overtime right now. That's what we should all be seeing. But Montclair, they got away with one there. Don't get me wrong. They deserved all three of the goals that they got. They had brilliant play, but I'm not sure if they deserve to win that one in regulation. Potomac just didn't jump on the opportunity that they had. Goal food turned away. Rot's not there. Azaro waiting in the backfield. Everyone had to commit on that one. Otherwise, it was going to be a complete loss. It, I, I don't care who you are. At that point, you are not concerned about that ball getting back onto your side. With three seconds left, nah. -uh. You're just going up there and scoring that ball if possible, and that's exactly what we didn't see, unfortunately, there from Potomac State. So they're going to let that one get away from them, but they do still have the series lead. Flip reset? Ooh. Flip reset. All right. I believe okay. again. I mean, I guess Rots is pretty angry. He said, all right, cool. So we kind of threw game number three. I'm going to guarantee you we're not doing it in game number four. Rots just pops off to start this game. And uh, I, I think they might be just a little bit, uh, a little bit angry and want some revenge here in game number four, Keech. Yeah, I feel as though that is the case. They are just jumping on every single 50 perfectly. Golfer, or sorry, Goal Food puts one on. Azaro puts one forward. Goal Food gonna look for the shot. Azaro is in the backfield to keep this one in possession. No, he misses it. Legacy opportunity, not on target though, and is gonna get cleaned up by Rots, who rotated quickly back. Dafsi looking for the 50. Lifey does get the 50 though. Dafsi back into the danger zone, and Goal Food th th again. The pass is to clears for uh, Potomac State. They are just so efficient at getting this ball cleared out past the threats that could put it back in. So that way, there is no chance for Montclair to, to keep the midfield under lockdown like they like to do. And this is why it's been such an impressive game number three out of Montclair was that they really were finding those small opportunities and making the most of them pretty much every time. Yes, yeah. they had some issues with accuracy to start off, but as time went on, they got stronger and stronger. And unfortunately, in game number four, it's a quick goal that has separated the two of them. As since that first one, there has been no scoring since. A bit of a stalemate back and forth. Each team trying their offense, but Rots might have an opportunity here. Can't get the follow-up touch. But again, we're seeing the type of offense we've seen <gasps> all game so far. No! Dasty will be there, though, as the defense again. It's another whip on the backfield. This time, no one is there to save it, though, afterwards as Gold Food just straight misses this one on the ceiling. Are we seeing, dare I say, 
are we seeing a little bit of a choke here on the side of Potomac? I don't want to say yes, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to for right now. Potomac, after looking so dominant again, folks, if you remember, they were up two games or two, yeah, two games in this series. And now all of a sudden, they're looking like they might not even be able to secure this in four. MSU have just become electric here. And really, they have found every single answer. Oh, my word. I thought that all of a sudden, Potomac also just owned goal. The Zero will try and starve this one off. And that should have been two to one. Legacy puts this one high high out there basically into the stands but if you've got no one in net it's not going to matter what is going on with potomac these clears just going nowhere that is what's going on goal food don't know where that was going no one was there to send it to probably should have just taken it up the wall maybe he's looking for a pinch there i don't know but it might have been a better idea to just take that one up the wall instead it just goes right back out to the awaiting attacker the clears are not as controlled as they were that's a dirty fake there by legacy fortunately rots is able to come up there and get a hold of it a little bit of a touch it's going to be on target wait is that on target i think it is well no not quite off backboard and needs to someone needs to be there for potomac someone needs to be there for potomac to score those just keep the, their commitments on offense is very questionable at best right now because they are putting a second man to try and commit on offense but it's always at seemingly inopportune times you can't double commit basically on offense and look at how quickly you had the follow-up there i'm not it's not terrible but you really should be giving your team at least a little bit more time when you challenge so quickly after the teammate before you challenge all you do is leave room for a risky play to go awry so they've got to try and play a little bit more safely a shot here and a goal here will absolutely give them some much needed momentum as Azura will finish off this flick from Rots. Now maybe Potomac can settle down a little bit and keep themselves in this game. That just came from a little bit of a miss by Legacy there. Unfortunately, Montclair's, a lot of the goals for Potomac have come off of Montclair uh, mistakes. And that's exactly what they can't be doing. Legacy will get a hold of this one. A little bit of a double commit. Lifey is going to be in position, though. Dapsy up off the backboard. Azaro interferes with it before it goes there. And this one's rolling in front of net. Is anybody there? Finally, Lifey comes across, but Gold Food had all the time in the world to get to that, too. I don't know how many times we can yell at our mics about this. At a certain point, I feel like I'm going to just break my mic from the sheer vibrations I'm putting into this. What is going on on defense for Potomac right now? It, it really doesn't feel like it, the saddest thing about this entire thing, and this is just so heartbreaking for Potomac, is that they would be up 2-0 to zero in the series if it straight up just weren't for errors. Every single goal that has gone in favor of MSU so far has been a gift. Literally, Potomac has basically given them either an open net, an open look, an easy shot, something similar not to take away from how MSU have played this game but they haven't necessarily had to work as uh, incredibly difficultly on offense they just they've been playing well but really and I'd say 80% of that is the fact that we just keep seeing Potomac serve it up to them on a silver platter we can't see Potomac continue to get these bad clears. We know that they can get them. We know we can get them efficiently, and they need to keep that up. Every time they get a really good clear, they get a goal off of it. That's what they need to focus on right now. As I say, as they still have the game lead 2-1, to one, but if we keep seeing this, this level of play, and they can't get a good couple shots in here and get one in net, we might be seeing a game 5. You did predict this one wouldn't go the distance. I, I mean... Never have I been so angry to go to a game five in my in my career so far here. I'm not necessarily, you know, I'm not furious at the uh, fast, but I just don't feel like we should be going to a game five. It, right now, this should have been one of these things where Potomac, if they had locked down, if they had started to play how we saw in game one and two, this one would be over. But they have had such a defensive breakdown here no in game there. three and four. And it's just we've got to see something change for them and if we do not see it i don't even know if they'll be able to win this one in game five well, here, they we, might go. Get reverse here we go here oh, we go here we go a better oh, shot. oh my word kigabyte finally some electricity for potomac soon as i saw this clear i'm like rots or zero are gonna be there and they both could have been there but rots jumps for it first great redirect to set it up for goal food who puts it on target three three with 14 seconds left we are in golden goal territory Lifey, good win off the kickoff. Goal food is going to make sure this one stays under control. If it goes, if this goes to overtime, who do you think has the, has the advantage? 
Honestly, I, I'm gonna give it back to Potomac, and for one reason alone, we have seen hey, them when they need to, they clutch up pretty well. The question is, is whether or not they're gonna be able to do this in overtime, and well, we're about to find out. As you said, golden goal rules apply. First one to score is gonna either take us to game number five or finish the series here. It's for Potomac, it's about playing without any errors. No for way. MSU, it's about oh. thinking when they need to. MSU have got to put on a solid offense, otherwise this is gonna be a difficult one, but so far, it's been all defense as they've been locked in their half. One chance here, though, now. Lifey might try to get a good 50. This is to the center. Legacy is there, but Rots will get in the way. Rots the 50, ki 50 king for the day and continues to dazzle as, oh, this could be the end here. Rots, though, cannot get that 50. He will get a lot of them, but unfortunately, when it comes crucial, just not quite able to do so. Two up now for Montclair. They're going to have to rush back as Rots is pushing them. Dafsi on target. Azaro can't get a hold of it. It's barred down. Legacy puts it in. We're going to game five. We go to game five, and unfortunately, it's the same sort of tale for Potomac here. Azuro just a bit too far pushed out, cannot make the touch. And, well, there's that dive that we've been telling Potomac to go do because MSU have picked up, have made the adjustments, and have brought us to game number five. They're on the verge of a reverse sweep right now. And for Montclair, there can be nothing sweeter than that after a dominant performance the first two games out of Potomac. This would be quite the win for them to bring this back in five. Yeah, and uh, honestly, you got to wonder, where is Potomac going wrong here? We're seeing that they're, or, sorry, where did they kind of lose it? Their clears are not nearly as efficient. They're not committing that second man on, on offense when they need to be, when they have basically open nets or literally open nets. And then their defense even is kind of slow on those 50s. Meanwhile, we're seeing Montclair with their incredible 50 skill. They are just taking these 50s, pushing it in gradually, 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 even at the end there. We saw Lifey pushing the ball through, just getting a 50 just by sitting in place, and then another 50 just by sitting in place, and then a good finish off on a good shot by Legacy. That's what we saw so much of in that game, one way or another, Lifey just getting those 50s and then setting up his teammates. Potomac needs to be cognizant of that. They need to be aware that that is happening and stop it. I just don't think that they, right now, it doesn't seem like they have the pace to do so. I think that they got beat so many times on risky challenges that, that they've stopped really going for them entirely. And, well, I don't think that's the, that's not the right strategy here, to be honest. As much as I understand you don't want to take the risk, sometimes that's what a good three-man rotation is, is one person takes a risk and then you have your teammates to back you up. But it really doesn't look like they're as in sync as they need to be right now. A good play might give them some momentum but potomac state looking still a little bit awkward here even though they've got an offense lifey though just as awkward as well gold food will be there doesn't necessarily get on a ripper but it's a lot of good offensive pressure here the question is is can potomac convert it doesn't look like they're going to be able to not on this push at least now dafsi will have a good opportunity does put that one on target but a save from gold food comes out Azaro back up field looking for legacy rots not able to get there not able to get that 50 and this is what I was talking about Montclair's biggest strength is their 50s and they seem to be using it to their advantage significantly they are really relying on those 50s just like lifey is going to do here great 50 from lifey out to legacy now back to lifey who's going to look for a 50 but rots is at midfield Dapsy back out to center trying to get this ball to center he goes what a bump from dapsy and legacy is able to put that one on target this was a great commit from montclair and they're gonna take the early lead oh my word what a bump there rods just can't really do much and unfortunately it's more problems on the back here backhand here for potomac they they've got to try and slow this one down it really does seem like every single time montclair get a solid offense it's just panic all around and the offense still doesn't seem to have that spark of life as well gold food probably should have dove a little bit earlier there to try and keep that offensive pressure but just waited a bit too long and now here comes montclair almost a good opportunity but it's cut off early but again Again, just look at the change in pace out of these two teams. Potomac right now seem to keep trying to break this down and set up something more intricate. Meanwhile, MSU are all guns ablazing here. Constantly have the volume knob turned up to 11 and don't plan on slowing down anytime soon. They just have Potomac in such an awkward state that Potomac just can't get any momentum in their favor. No, and Potomac, they are getting some very dangerous clears here. Clearing it across their net in that case. Double commit. 
Azaro and Rots both went for it. Gold Food now left alone in the backfield to try and get control of this one. He does. Rots is going to be there, though, reading the touch from Legacy. Azaro, good commit. That one's going to drop down. It's still dangerous. Lifey is there for the clear, and he won't have control of that one, though. So it goes to Azaro who just keeps dumping this ball back into the Montclair zone. Oh, unfortunate touch by Lifey. Oh. Still in danger. Rots, good shot, but it's going to get barred out. And Dafsi now looking for the turnaround, but goal food is there in the backfield to get the job done and prevent a goal, another goal for Montclair. Just as I say that, though, Lifey takes a one away from goal food. Good 50s all the way, like I've been saying. Rots, good 50 by Dafsi again to get it past him. And back at midfield hovering here it's been all on the orange side for most of this game and we're just past halftime now potomac they're only down by one we know they can come back from these but they're, they're gonna have to really put their nose to the grindstone to do it yeah they're really gonna have to pull out something we have not seen before shots like that aren't bad but unfortunately it just seems like msu have gotten all too prepared for the type of offense that potomac have had over and over and over again well, I love to say that the fundamentals are great, but if the fundamentals aren't working out, it's time for you to surprise your opponents. It really does seem like right now, MSU are incredibly comfortable with only a one goal lead in a minute and a half. You'd expect, oh, at least a little bit of panic there. There's at least a little bit as Lifey does miss that save. But besides that one missed touch, it doesn't look like there's any panic out of MSU whatsoever. Dominant so Whoa. far here as they are still prepared on the back end. It's a good clear out of Potomac, but the fact that Lifey was there ahead of time just shows you how much they are reading Potomac's moves right now. Oh my Potomac word. Potomac needs no to start, stop relying on 50s on their own. Oh, that's so close. And there's the finish by Dafsi. Potomac needs to stop relying on 50s on their own. They need to make sure they are 50ing this ball as little as possible because every time we see a 50, it goes in favor of Montclair. That is practically universal. I don't think we've seen any, like, I think we might be seeing 20% of 50-50s go in favor of Potomac, but that, it, that might even be generous, to be honest. Legacy. Oh, that's not a great touch. Azaro was there, but Dafsi was there quicker. Lifey now, good 50 to get it past Rots, back to center. Legacy is there, good 50 to get away from Goal Food. Dafsi is going to be there in time too. Good 50 away from Rots. And I keep saying good 50 over and over, but that's exactly what we're seeing. Shot, save, Legacy, one more. No, Goal Food is going to be able to send this one out. They need this goal right now on this offensive push. Rots is going to get it away from one. Takes it past Legacy, looking for the redirect. Puts it to center, Goal Food needs to be there, but Lifey is there first. Great clear, that might have just spelled the death knell for Potomac, especially if that one goes in, but not quite. Over and over again, though, we see the same sort of thing here. I mean, you mentioned the 50s, but really it's the emphasis of this game. And I think part of that is because of the fact that Potomac kind of just doubled down on their 50s. After a good start where they were winning every single 50, they kind of, wait a minute, banked on it from there on out. And well, I think we can say that this one is definitively going in favor of MSU as Potomac once again are not able to find the back of the net. Can they get a consolation goal? No, not quite. And Montclair State University will do it in the absolute most exquisite fashion. Reverse sweep here, Gigabyte. We weren't sure this was even going to go to game five after the first two, but all of a sudden Montclair turned this one around and dominated for the second half of this series. GG's very well played to Montclair State. That was an insane fifth game and an insane reverse sweep for Montclair. They just rode on the back of their 50s. We mentioned it very, very early on in the series right after game one and they rode them all the way. Potomac, they just, like you said, they seemed to double down on them. And that's, that was not what they needed to do. They needed to just kind of pass the ball back and forth to each other, make sure that Montclair can't get a 50 on them, and then finish the ball off that way. Instead, they just kept getting into 50, 50s with Montclair, which, newsflash, is not a good idea. Yeah, it just... It really wasn't the most beneficial of ideas to just kind of try the same sort of strategy over and over and over again. It, we, you've seen it before. We've said it before. A lot of the reason that these teams take the wins in these type of series is their adjustments. And when you can't necessarily make the correct adjustments and you kind of just double down on mistakes that aren't working in your favor, it really isn't going to work that well. I mean, it's just... I, I do I, I do feel for for uh, what's it called I, I do feel for all of the guys off of Potomac because of the fact that it was working so well the first two games after working so well for two games 
it is really difficult to sort of it's difficult to try and shy away from that you just want that electricity that spark of life again and when it doesn't happen it's absolutely crushing so well played to montclair but potomac i definitely do see that spark of life is still there for you guys definitely think you need to make some more adjustments as the series goes on but you know that all comes with experience and time so hopefully they can do so as it is a heartbreaking loss here in week number six but again plenty of time left in the season for sure and by the way chat we hear you we will have Lifey in for an interview here in just a moment to talk about that incredible reverse sweep by Montclair. But, you know, you had just touched on it. It just, it just all came down to Potomac not taking advantage of the opportunities that they had. And that is really... Again, there's not much to say besides that. They, they were slow to challenges. They were slow to commit that second man or that third man when they needed to. And that towards the end of those games that they were losing, they did not play like they were losing. They, play like, they played like they were about to win, which is not something that they can do. They need to be committing that third in those situations. Yeah, absolutely. I think that they're, I mean, we just go back to say it. This series could have been over in i think it was game number three if we had seen that that commitment from goal food on that open net that could have been a completely different series but at the end of the day it's not really going to matter that is all in the past but in the present right now is lifey who has hopped into the booth with us lifey congratulations on the win my friend how are you feeling after that reverse sweep i was very nervous games one then we had very good momentum game two and I thought we were gonna lose game three. I thought it was over, but something <laughs> just something just clicked with our team, and well, I, I I'm speechless. We brought it back, and we were all just screaming in our comms. I mean that that click moment definitely happened in that game three. There was a little bit of a gift that you got given by Potomac too. Is right at the end there, they had that ball hovering directly in front of your net and they didn't commit on it. Was there any sort of a mindset shift after you saw that Potomac was not committing heavily on these balls that they probably should have been? What what was your difference there? Like, what did you change based on that on that uh, observation? Um, so we noticed that they took our boost a lot and they had a lot of momentum, like the whole game. So I was telling my team, like, I was like, all right, come on guys, come on. We can't let them, we, we have to, we can't let them breathe. Just like they're not letting us breathe. And as soon as they were making mistakes towards the end, I was like, yeah, we got this for sure. I was like, like, there's no way we're losing this guys. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and you, you you could tell that you guys were a little bit starved because you had a lot of times where you were just slowly pushing the ball upfield and relying on those 50s that they were just kind of pushing into you, challenging, but you were kind of sitting there as a rock right behind the ball. And you especially were doing that a lot. What was the mindset of clears on defense and how exactly were you going about getting uh, the ball into a good spot for you? So if we were being pressured a lot on defense, I was letting them know, like, just get a hard clear you know, try to recollect and get small pads, big pads if they're available. And like whoever clears the ball, just run away with it. I keep going and don't let them get the ball again because we have to get boost and it, it worked. <laughs> to say it worked might almost be an understatement. You guys pulling off a reverse <laughs> sweep is uh, yeah. it's uh, pretty impressive to put it simply. I, I definitely don't think with the first two games we expected that we were saying we were hoping this one was going to game five to start the series. We thought the game would go, we would uh, the series would go to game five, and when it did, we were excited, but definitely not the fashion we were necessarily expecting. When it came to game five, obviously it was a little bit more of a uh, of a tense series to finish that one off. But once you got to that game five, was it kind of all right? Th we've got this. It's reverse sweep time we we're here to win it all was what was the mentality you know going into game number five so we were really pumped winning game four legacy was like screaming giving us so much <laughs> energy energy we didn't know we had like just just in there in us and we just yeah we just wrote it right into game five we took game five I'm glad to hear it. You guys had a phenomenal series, to put it simply. Uh, just really all around, very, very well done. Uh, I will say the physical play you guys also started pulling out towards the second half of that series was phenomenal as well. You guys just kind of had every single tool in your arsenal to, to start scoring goals however you really felt like it. Really, congratulations just all around there, Lifey. Any shout-outs you want to give before we let you go and go celebrate with your teammate? Um, Shout-out to one of my friends, Manny um he's supporting me i know he's putting some some lore some background lore of my story in the background of some, <laughs> some of the chats is it is this is his name cardinal of hell perchance 
Yes. You'll be happy, Mo. He never <laughs> lost faith in you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very right, much. Well, Lifey, uh, I actually, I'll leave it to Keeg. Keeg, any last questions you have for Lifey before we, before we let him go? No, I have nothing else for Lifey except for such a fantastic win for you guys. Great job on the reverse sweep, Montclair. And we can't wait to see what you guys have for us going on into the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the interview. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. And Bass, before we go, I'm, I'm about to break your heart here. We were talking about this beforehand, but Nordovin just lost in five. Oh, unfortunate, <laughs> unfortunate. The, R well, the RLCS guy over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily for you guys, you will not be as heartbroken as us because despite my favorite team in EU losing right now, that is not that is the end of the run for them. It's not the end of the run for you guys. We've got plenty of Rocket League action the rest of the day here at the NECC. So we're going to continue on with a bunch of that in just a moment. But before we do so, we're going to take a quick little break, get in our new pair of casters, and uh, show you guys a couple words from all of our partners here at the NECC who make this a weekly possibility. So thank you. Please do stick around and uh just come back in the break we got some more action for you over here at the necc rocket league What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. Wow. 